All right, now for the concept of a, a limiting reactant, also known as a limiting reagent, which is really just a chemical. Um, you often see it labeled like that, though. Uh, all right, we, we've been doing some stoichiometry, and we're figuring out, you know, how many grams or how many moles uh, are either required in a chemical reaction or are produced in a chemical reaction, and we're able to calculate back and forth. Now, that's if we only know one quantity. So if you're just given, you know, five grams of something and you want to know how much is produced or, or, or five moles is produced, how much did you need to start uh, with? Well, in a limiting reactant problem, uh, you're going to know the mass of both reactants. So uh, let's say you have a reaction like H2 plus O2 yields H2O. Uh, and you know you're starting with 10 grams of that and 10 grams of that. The question is going to be, how many grams of water can you make? Um, now, it's not going to be 20 grams. You can't just add those two together and that equals 20 uh, because one of those two reactants is probably going to run out first. Now, we know it in terms of a balanced chemical reaction, stoichiometry, um, and so you would have to do a calculation to figure out which one runs out first. You have to do a stoichiometry problem. All right, so here's my analogy uh, that I have here. Right here I have 10 stoppers, um, and right next to it I have three test tubes. So if I were to take a stopper, put it on a test tube, and make a stopper test tube, the question is, how many can I make? Well, it's pretty obvious. You take one, two, three stoppers. You could make three stopper test tubes. And then all of those are going to be used up, and you can't make any more. I can't make four because I don't have any more test tubes. All my test tubes are gone. But I do have leftover stoppers. All right, so the analogy to that is maybe I use up all of the hydrogen and I have leftover oxygen. Or I use up all of the oxygen and I, left, I have leftover hydrogen. All right, so let me go a step further than that. So let's say the stoppers have a mass of 1 gram. So I have 10 grams. Test tube's also a gram, so I have 3 grams. Now, we know about the law of conservation of mass. The law of conservation of mass says matter cannot be created nor destroyed. So if I start with 13 grams, I have to end up with 13 grams. But we just said we can only make three stopper test tubes. So on the other side, I can only make three, one, two, three, so I'm going to have a total of six grams. So the question is, where is the other seven grams? What happened to the other seven grams? Well, the answer to that is, it's the leftover stoppers. So we have the leftover stoppers. So right here I have uh, a simulation uh, that I found online making cheese sandwiches. So up here you can pick your ratio. Let's say you like two pieces of cheese, or I'm sorry, two pieces of bread, one piece of cheese, a pretty conservative sandwich. And you make one cheese sandwich. So it takes two pieces of bread, one piece of cheese yields one cheese sandwich. But down here we're going to do our reactant. So we're going to, let's say we start with 10 pieces of bread and 5 pieces of cheese. Well that one works out perfectly because you have a 2 to 1 ratio just like you have up here and you use it all up. But let's say instead of that we only have, let's say, 2 pieces of cheese, 9 pieces of bread. Well with 2 pieces of cheese and 9 pieces of bread you could see over here we could make 2 cheese sandwiches but once we make those 2 cheese sandwiches all the cheese is gone. So the reaction would stop. You can, you're going to have leftover bread. All right, now cheese and bread are not what we need to have to do. We need to uh, be able to do a um, stoichiometry problem dealing with grams and moles. And so here's our first one. Um, let's say we have this reaction that I was referring to. Uh, H2 plus O2 yields H2O. You've got to balance the reaction so it's a 2 to 1 to 2 mole ratio. And you're going to start with 50 grams of hydrogen and 50 grams of oxygen. The question is, how many grams of water? Well, if you start with 100 grams, you have to end up with 100 grams, but is this going to be 100 grams? And the answer is, well, it might, but we're not sure just by doing that. We have to do uh, the chemical reaction uh, and then the stoichiometry. So what you're going to do is, just like we've been solving, 50 grams of hydrogen, 50 grams of oxygen, what we're going to do is we're going to treat each one as an individual stoichiometry problem. We're going to convert the 50 grams of oxygen to water. We're going to convert the 50 grams of hydrogen to water. So we're going to end up with two answers, and we're going to evaluate which one's right. So our first step in a stoichiometry problem is to go from grams to moles. So we have grams. Well, get moles. We have grams, so grams to moles. 
molar mass, so 32 for oxygen. Okay, so now the ratio. Well, the ratio will be two hydrogens to two water. So two moles of hydrogen uh, will give you two moles of water. One mole of oxygen will give you two moles of water. So these are pretty standard stoichiometry problems. You can watch the other video to figure that out. All right, so now the last step then is it asks for grams of water. So one mole is 18, the molar mass of H2O. Now this last step, since you're trying to compare these two answers, has to be the same. So the last step here has to be the same. All right, so let's get our calculator out. So for hydrogen, uh, it's 50 divided by 2.02 .02 times 2 divided by 2. Skip that. And you can make 446 grams of water from that 50 grams of hydrogen. For the 50 grams of oxygen times 2 times 18, you could make 56.3 grams of water. Now, which one's right? <clears throat> well, this one, it's kind of obvious. You start with 100 grams, you cannot possibly make 400 grams. You'd be creating matter. Now, what that means is the 56.3 is going to be the right answer. Now, the easy way to evaluate this is the smaller of these two will always be the right answer because what that means is as soon as you get to 56.3 grams of water, all 50 grams of the oxygen is used up. That is called the limiting reactant. So the limiting reactant stops the chemical reaction because it runs out. You have none left, so the reaction stops, and it will stop at the lower of these two values. So I can't make 400 because as soon as I make 56.3, all of the oxygen has gone. Now I'm going to do one more of these, and then I'm going to make another video showing you how to calculate how much of the hydrogen is left over. This is not the only way to solve this. Um, but since we've been doing stoichiometry problems this same way, I think it's the easiest. All right, next one. I, I chose 100 grams again, so this time we're going to start with 68.9 grams of that, 31.1 grams of that, and we're asked how many grams of silver chloride. So um, 68.9 grams of silver, 31.1 grams of chlorine. I have grams again, so I need moles. Molar mass of silver is 108 grams and one mole of silver. The ratio is two silvers to two silver chlorides. Um, and then one mole is, we have 108 and 35.5, 143.5 grams of silver chloride. Remember that last step should be the same on both. All right, so we have chlorine. So 71 grams molar mass of Cl2, one Cl2 to two AgCl's. And then, like I said, the last step, since we're trying to compare grams of AgCl, it should be the same um, last step. So was it 68.9? So 68.9 divided by 108 times 2 divided by 2. So I'm going to skip that, 143.5. And I get 91.5 as my answer for grams of the first one. So from the silver, I can get 91.5. From the chlorine... I can get 126 grams. So the correct answer is it's going to be 91.5 grams of AgCl that is produced. You can't possibly make 126 because once you get to 91.5, all of the silver is gone. Now, I picked these numbers this time to show you that even though there was less grams of chlorine, it ended up being the excess reactant. Remember, the excess is the one that is left over. So this one is called the limiting reactant. That's the excess reactant. Um, and the limiting reactant runs out at 91.5 grams of silver chloride. All right, so there's limiting reactant. Um, and like I said, on the next video, I'm going to show you how to solve for the grams of excess reactant left over.